welcome to episode five um, of my epic bike trip, which has now resorted to a hire car, a stolen hire car. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, it's Easter Sunday, and uh, I'm still in te uh, Tennessee. Um, but uh, having spent the morning praying for my own uh, motorcycle resurrection, I decided to uh, take heed of the ancient teachings of Chubbawamba uh, that says, you get knocked down, you get back up again. Nothing's going to keep you down. It says something about alcohol as well, but I knew all that stuff already. But anyway, uh, so I've used the hire car and uh, I've got it extended. I finally managed to get hold of somebody and I've headed back up into the mountains, the great smoky mountains here. And I've just come along the road and saw this place. I mean, I mean you can see that. It's an awesome freaking steam engine. There's a bit of a bit of a lumber museum here. Um, but um, what I also found, you're going to love this. guys in the hotel found me this. It's a top secret Harley Davidson owners map of all of their favorite routes up here. Now um, I did dip my toe in the, uh, the, the Harley waters many years ago, but having spent three months trying to make the motorbike ride like a motorbike without sparks flying out the side when you try to corner, um, I gave that up. So I, I'm not, I don't think I'm supposed to have it, but they've got some pretty wicked routes around here. So uh, I'm gonna ride a, uh, drive a couple of those and see, uh, see how much trouble I can get into. Um, can't get any worse, can it? I'm not sure, but, uh, but hey, this is a good start. Uh, Easter Sunday, out in the car, up in the mountains, beautiful. Okay, so the goat has been growing a bit, so I'm uh, and I'm not here on my bike, so I'm hoping that uh, with the beard uh, I might get accepted by these uh, these uh, these Harley bikers in here, and uh, and they won't object too much to me being there. <laughs> yeah, I think I got away with that. They didn't notice. <laughs> Food's really nice, really friendly people. <laughs> uh, it's a cool trip. Right, I had to bring you to this place. I looked this up this morning when I was trying to find something to do. Uh, this is the Smoky Mountains Knife Works. Uh, it's claimed to fame, it's, it's the largest knife shop in the world. But the good thing about this place is really, really cool, is um, the original owner uh, makes knives and uh, that little building over there was his original forge. But what he does um, four days a week uh, for $100 each, um, he runs a little class and he gives you a big chunk of um, horseshoe or railroad spike or just a piece of you know scrap metal um, and it helps you forge it and make your own knife um, and then they give you a little leather sheep and a, and a photograph of, of you with the uh, the master knife man but uh, hopefully it's open I know it's Easter Sunday but uh, hopefully it's open I'm gonna go have a look at the largest knife shop in the world <laughs> this place is crazy look at it oh man No, it just keeps on going. It's getting bigger and bigger. It goes back further and further. <laughs> even more. There's more. Oh no, hold on, this is a whole kitchen store. But I think I've seen guns somewhere. Don't so only room for seeing players playing the Lord for the hands upstairs. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Oh. Catchy. That place is truly amazing. Um, I'm knife blind now. I've seen so many knives, I don't know whether it's a good one, a bad one. The only thing they don't sell in there are plasters. <laughs> but uh, what an amazing place. You've got to come, to, if you ever come to Tennessee, go to the Smoky Mountains Knife Works. It's awesome. <laughs> Okay, hi. Um, you find me today at the uh, Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. I'm an hour early because a stupid Englishman in America forgets about time zone changes, so they're a 
They're an hour behind, so I'm, a, I'm an hour early. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get on an earlier tour, but uh, hopefully we're going to uh, taste a bit of Jack Daniels. This is the cave uh, where the um, limestone above it filters the water to take out all the iron. So it's uh, what makes the Jack Daniels special, I think. It's uh, the Jack Cave. Just an interesting fact, all the trees and all the buildings and everything else are black. And I asked why, and it turns out there's a moss that's attracted to the yeast that's airborne here. And it just turns everything black. They've got a four mile uh, black area based on the yeast that's uh, caused the moss. Okay, that was a, a fantastic place to go and visit. Uh, I've learned so much about uh, uh, Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey. Um, never been a big fan, just done the tasting. And once you understand it and you taste it, you get it. It's like, you, I've been doing it wrong all these years. So I'm just off to the gift shop and buy myself a uh, large bottle of number seven. I'm loving Lynchburg. <laughs> it's a tiny little town. Bandstand. <laughs> How cool. Okay, it's Tuesday. Um, I left our our friends at Good Times uh, alone all day, thinking that they're going to need all day to fix my bike, um, and I might get a call tomorrow. But I've just had a call. It's uh, half past four in the afternoon, and they say my bike's fixed. So I'm just about to go in there and probably get the bill of my life. Uh, but I'll let you know later. Oh man, that's looking better <laughs> than the last time I saw it. Uh, that was quite a shock. But anyway, this is Kevin. Kevin is a um, motorcycle mechanic genius that's uh, put this back together for me. Um, so I'm on the road again. Okay, as you can see, I've now been in Tennessee long enough to become a fully paid up supporter of the Tennessee Volunteers, go to Vols. Um, okay, I've just ridden my bike back from um, the good times and it feels like a new bike, it's amazing. Um, so pleased with what they've done to, to get me back on the road and the, and the efforts they went to to get me going. So this week's been a pretty unexpected adventure. Um, when I was planning for this trip, I thought I'd thought of everything, considered everything that might go wrong and tried to plan for every one of them. But um, a, uh, a bearing failing in such a catastrophic way just wasn't on the radar. So my bike and I have some serious relationships issues to overcome now. Um, she's let me down just when I needed her the most and uh, I need to find a way to, to forgive her uh, and move on. But I'm sure we'll be in love again in a, in a few miles tomorrow. Uh, so I am back on the road again. I have tied up how much this breakdown's cost and I've yet to be able to say it out loud. So um, I'll either keep practicing until I can or I'll... Uh, or I'll um, I'll write it down at the end of <laughs> at the end of this, just so you can see quite quite how how bad this week has been for me. Uh, so, needless to say, uh, fair chunk of cash, but I'm um, uh, I'm glad that I took the cottage job now before I left the UK, and I can pay off my credit card when I get home. So uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to load up the bike and I'm going to head for the Loveless Cafe, the Loveless Cafe, just outside Nashville. Uh, which was another recommendation. Um, and looking at the map, it's about four or five hour ride from here if I take the scenic route. Um, now the Loveless Cafe marks the start of the Natchez Trace, which is another 400 plus mile uh, parkway south. Um, so uh, heading south, 
down towards Jackson, Tuplo Jackson, um, comes out just north of Baton Rouge. So hopefully the weather's going to be a bit better. So um, this is the end of this chapter. Um, I'm hoping this will be the last real test <laughs> and that I can get back on and in, uh, enjoy enjoy my uh, the rest of this trip. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Hiya. Um, okay, I've been sent so many messages of support this week and the, the common question that's coming through is how do you keep your sense of humour? How do you keep laughing when all this stuff's happening to you? Um, yeah, yeah, there's no doubt I've had a nightmare of a week this week. But And during that week, I have felt so many emotions. None of it's I've, I've captured on camera, and there's really good reasons for it. Some of the things, I've felt angry and frustrated, lots of despair. Um, mostly pretty lonely, sort of dealing with it on your own. But uh, uh, lots of the why me's, uh, and it's not fair. But, um, but to keep smiling and to keep laughing as you go in, when you're dealing with people that are trying to help you, it's pretty easy. It's all about perspective, really. None of this is personal. No one's doing this deliberately to try and stop me. Um, and you keep that in mind. Now, I've got friends and family at home that are in the UK that are dealing with some pretty serious stuff in their lives. You know, proper life-changing issues that uh, they're doing it with such dignity without any complaint and they're sending me messages of support they're saying that they enjoy watching these videos and sort of knowing this this keeps me going there's no way you're going to see me complaining my, my troubles can easily be fixed with a talented mechanic and some spanners um so from my perspective i'm, I'm always going to be the lucky one and you guys sending me these messages really kept me going this week and uh, and kept my sense of humor and um, i'm hoping that you know there's been no misery in my in my film so far but uh, this one's to you guys you you, you stay strong and, and you'll get through this i'm sure you will